We're going to calibrate an F-series pressure switch. The F-series pressure switch is an explosion-proof pressure switch with a dual chamber design, which allows the adjustment to be made with the electrical connection still intact while you're in a hazardous environment. We've already connected the wires up. This is a wired switch, so the normally open connection is a blue wire. The normally closed connection is a red wire. The common connection is a white wire, and this switch has a ground wire, the green wire, which is not used during calibration. The adjustment is located under the cover on the side of the switch. Remove the cover and you have the adjustment knob that you will be able to place a screwdriver blade into to make the adjustment. The first step of calibration is to exercise the switch to make sure it is operating correctly. To exercise a switch, start from 0 PSI and increase to full range of the switch. In this case, 100 PSI and then return back to 0. This should be done three times. Now we'll be ready to set our switch. We are going to set this switch to 80 PSI increasing pressure. So the first step would be to go from zero to 80 PSI and hold it there. We will then adjust the switch to operate at 80 PSI. You'll note that the switch did turn on ahead of the set point, but that is okay. We are going to adjust it so it will turn off and then turn back on again at the set point. So to do that, we are going to use our adjustment screwdriver and we're gonna place it inside and turn in the clockwise direction to increase the set point of the switch. We will keep doing this until the switch turns off. It just turned red. Now we will go back and set it to turn back on just at 80. So we will turn in the counterclockwise direction until the light turns back on. The light just turned back on. Now we need to check the set point to see if it's where we wanted it to be. So to do that, we lower the pressure back to zero. Raise it up to just before 80. See if we are closer. Pretty much dead on 80. So now we're going to take it down and measure the dead band. And we would back it down. It's about a 2 psi dead band. And we'd see that it turned off. And then we take it back down to zero. It is normal to repeat set point measurements three times to verify repeatability. We'll start with the decreasing set point by going to full range, taking it up to 100, and then we're going to drop it back down to our desired set point of 20. It doesn't matter where the switch starts, turned on around 80. We're going to adjust it so that it resets at 20. So to do that, we'll bring the pressure down to 20 PSI. And then we're gonna adjust the switch using the screwdriver, insert it into the adjustment ring and turn it counterclockwise. And we were set fairly high in the switch, so it's gonna take several turns to bring the set point down. We're gonna turn it all the way till the switch turns on, and then we're gonna go backwards to get it to turn off again. Now the switch just turned on, so what we're going to do is go back clockwise until the switch turns off.
That'll be the light turning red. And the light just turned red. Now we'll go down and measure the set point. We go always go back to zero on a decreasing set point and then to full range. So we go back up to 100. And then back down and we'll measure the actual set point. Which is just 20 now. Now we will increase the pressure to see the point it turns back on, and that difference will be the dead band, which appears to be right around one PSI. It is normal to repeat set point measurements three times to verify repeatability. For set points on vacuum range switches, it is best to think of the set point as a negative pressure. So an increasing vacuum set point is a decreasing pressure set point, and a decreasing vacuum set point is an increasing pressure set point.